Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Sean Hodgins and welcome back to my second channel. Today we're going to be hacking the Hackpack Domino robot and we're going to turn it into a robot that can avoid obstacles. It's going to be really cool. Well, let's go. The Crunch Labs Domino Robot Hackpack lets you build a small motorized robot that will lay out perfectly spaced dominoes, and it will also follow a path using electrical tape. But since it is motorized, it means we can hack it to make it do all sorts of fun different things that it wasn't originally designed to do. For this hack, you're going to need three of these GP2Y0A21IR distance sensors, three of these DuPont connectors with the pin side, doesn't matter what the other side has because you're going to end up cutting these. Some M3 plastic threading screws. Really any screws that fit in the holes will work, but I like to use these screws that are specifically meant for plastic threading. They work great for 3D prints. This 3D printed part that I designed that you can download and there's a link in the description. And you're going to need a soldering iron of some sort. So the first thing I like to do for any of my projects or any project in general, is to start the 3D prints because they usually take the longest. And then while the 3D printing is happening, I can get the other things done. If you don't have a 3D printer yourself, you should check around for a local makerspace or even a public library. They often have 3D printers that you can use. So typically these sensors come with a little wire harness and they don't usually have any sort of connector on the other end. It's just like a loose stranded wire. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to cut the wire with the pin connector on the end and you're going to solder it on to the end of the harness for the sensor. And all three of the power sensors can be soldered together and all three of the ground sensors can be soldered together. You'll have something that looks like this mess of wires. It's got the three sensor connectors on it and then it's got the three analog outputs that are yellow and then the power and the ground, which are all connected together so that they only take up one pin. Of course, there's other ways you can do this, but I like to simplify my wiring by doing it like this. Once your 3D printed part is done, you're going to take your three sensors and you're going to screw them to the front, upside down. Then you're going to use this bolt right in the front to hold the sensor mount. Just like that. It might move around a little, but that shouldn't matter too much. And once you've got all your sensors mounted, you can plug in the harness. Remember, red goes to power, black to ground, and then you've got the three sensors. So you want the middle one to go to A6, the left one to go to A7, and the right one to go to A5. And also at this time, you can disconnect the two IR sensors and the servo because we're not going to be using them. So you'll have these extra connectors and you'll have space on the board here. Now in the description below, there's a link to my GitHub that'll have the firmware for this obstacle avoidance. So once you upload that code to your robot, turn it on. It'll now try and drive around any obstacles that you put in front of it. So I'm sure you're curious as to how the code actually works. So uh, let me bring it up and we'll do a little quick rundown on the, uh, on everything. Okay, so for this code, you can see we've got all the original motor driver pins. These are the same ones that are in the hack pack code. Then we've got these new sensors. These may be different from what I said earlier. Just make sure that whatever sensor you've plugged into which pin correlates here. Otherwise it's not going to work or it might turn the wrong way. And then we've got a variable that is the furthest the sensor can see. And I believe this is the closest the sensor can see. And then we have a minimum speed. Then we've got the two motors just the same way as before. We begin these sensors as an input. They're just an analog input, so they're really simple to use. Um, IR sensors 
don't work for everything because sometimes things can have weird reflections and uh, you know, it could have a weird absorbance of the light. So they only work in certain situations. So right away in the loop, we read each one of the sensors. That's the first thing we do. So we get a reading from each left, right, and center sensor. And then we print it just to see if they're working. It's always nice to put serial prints in just to uh, know that your code's doing something. So the most important part of the program is right here. Taking the readings from all three sensors and it's mapping them to a value between negative 255 and 255. It's basically saying if the left sensor has the closest value, then to make that motor slow down. And then if the right sensor has a closer far value, then to make it slow down or speed up. And the middle sensor is kind of like a general speed. So if there's nothing in front of the middle sensor, then it can go as fast as it wants. So that will determine the forward speed. Then you take both the left sensor and the right sensor, and you actually subtract it from the forward speed. And that's just gonna determine how fast each motor is able to go, and that's gonna make the robot turn in either direction, or if there's something in front of all three, it's gonna make it drive backwards. We have a min speed because we, there's, a, there's an area of, speed where the motors won't actually turn. So it won't actually do anything. So we want to make sure that it's always above that value to make it more lifelike or else it'll get trapped because there won't be enough um, voltage to make the motors actually turn. Less than zero, then it's actually going to be the minimum speed minus 20 because again, we want it to be able to back up. This is a really like simple way of adding some more movement, like lifelike movements to the robot because we're allowing it to also back up and get it out of the way of the object. It doesn't work perfectly, but uh, this, is, this is a really simple way to do it. And then finally, we set the speed, the combined speed that we've added up over all this little process, and we send that to the motor driver. So that tells it how fast the motor driver should either go forward or go backwards. And that's for each motor. And that'll determine to go straight, turns left, turns right, or goes backwards, backwards left, backwards right. So this code is super basic and you can definitely add some cool features if you want to make it behave a little bit better or smarter. And another way you can change the behavior of the robot if you want to, is to change this angle of each sensor. Because if you put this wider, it might be able to steer better around something versus running into it if it's out of the view right here. So there's a lot of little variables that you can change and I'll give you this file if you're uh, up for trying to make those modifications. So there is actually a Discord where people, including myself, are posting Hackpack hacks and uh, I'll put a link to that in the description as well. You should go check it out because there's a lot of cool things that you can do that you may not know you can do with your Hackpack. And also if you've done your own hacks, you definitely need to post them there, and some of them may even end up in a Crunch Labs video. So, definitely worth it. So, like I mentioned, this is my second channel. I usually upload just more off the cuff videos here, hack pack hacks, all kinds of things. If you want to see some crazier projects and more, I don't know, cinematic videos, you should check out my main channel. There's a link below. You can see things like this crazy LED matrix mass that I just made, and all sorts of wild projects like that. So anyways, everyone, thanks for watching.